I realised I've got time today to do a quick video on the latest update to the Flying the Bug 3 with the Jumper Saga and that we've now got a new version thanks to another developer who, which allows us to uh, bind it without having to do the lookup lookups included in the, uh, in the code which is fantastic. So I'll just hook up my jumper again and uh, walk, walk through the procedure. First step is just to plug in the jumper to the Windows XP computer I've got and I've got the um, this version of deviation on my thumb drive ready to put across there um, you can see the files here on the screen so the next step is to fire up um, the program Get it on screen here, defuse, yep, yeah. hit that, comes up, and then comes up with that. And if I turn on the jumper, which I don't think I can do one handed, I'll put this down and just have it on an angle, but basically, oh yeah I can. I'm holding the um, the bottom bu bottom button down, pushing this up. I've got power. The screen goes black, which is what you want. Scarily, as it might seem, can't see that too well, but it does. And if we get back to the screen on the PC, what we can see now is that it's saying. You've got an option to leave DFU mode, which implies it's in DFU mode. More importantly, you've got vendor ID, product versions and stuff like that. So at this stage, looking across here, with what I've got on the, uh, on the thumb drive, I'll open that directory. And within that directory, it's got the DFU file, and that's what we're going to flash. Okay. So going back to this screen, and I'm going to go to the D drive, I'm going to open up the directory, and I'm going to select the a uh, new DFU file that's in there. Say open. And what we're seeing now, file correctly loaded. Um, you've got the, the name of the file that I've just loaded and it's ready to go. So I'll do it again so I can say upgrade. I'm just overwriting what I've already got there, but hey. So here we go. And we get this scary message about uh, impossible to check. Continue. Yes. Back to the screen. And what we're seeing now is the arrays phase of the update process in progress. And that's pretty quick. I don't know how often I can uh, flash firmware before the uh, gear wears out, but I hope I don't find out. But I've done it a few times already. So we're now into the next phase, which is firmware upgrading, the download phase. So that's a new image coming down. So as I say, it takes a little longer. Just trying to support my hand. Try not to wobble around too much, but I think it's probably useful to see this in detail in real time so you know what you're up against. The big improvement for this one is that you no longer use the look up, need the lookup table to map the um, transmitter ID to the receiver ID because the, the if-else to match them is done within the code, which is great. Except the code's getting a little bigger now. 
So in the future there may be an issue if uh, more features are going to be added such as uh, telemetry sensing when the bat telling you when the battery is going low or telling you when it's out of range. So okay we have a successful upgrade now. So at this stage we can um, leave DFU mode and when we, the moment we do that you hear a, a tinkle from the uh, transmitter as it goes back into um, normal mode. So we can quit this. We've got everything we need and I'll turn off the jumper. Pause the recording. Okay, I'm back on the jumper, and what I'm doing now, if I can show it, is I'm in the process of deleting deleting whatever I had in fixed ID. So having done that, I can move down to done press enter and if I go down through my sections again and below bind under fixed ID it's got none which is what you want. You can go to bind so at this stage I press enter to put it into bind mode. I've now plug in the battery and the bugs Days, this is possibly the confusing bit. At this stage, the thing to do with the the jumper. is to turn it off. And we can disconnect the bugs. Now when we turn it back on again, we should find out that instead of none, in the fixed ID field, it will have filled in a number and that number is the transmitter thing. That's, that's the thing you used to have to look up in a table. The upgrade to the, um, the firmware does that for us automatically. Okay, having seen that um, we can go back up to to bind or to, uh, to, well, we've got it loaded um, go to bind rather and press enter you hear the chirp and in my case Okay, so moving things around, so I can look at both at the same time. Um, if I flick the flick the switch up, it should turn the lights off. That's just useful as diagnostics. This bug is a heavily crashed one, and I've only got one LED working. I haven't bothered to restore the ones to the arms. So that's why it looks different. However, if you flick this, the motor's right. Now the top left motor is a little bit defective. It's got a loose bell housing. I've fixed it twice but I've got some new motors coming. So that's the whole process. And over there's the red one that I've been, I've also bound and been enjoying flying. So I hope this helps and I'll put this up very shortly. It occurred to me while I've got the Windows XP machine up, I'll just uh, show you a little bit about editing the model, model files. 
it's covered in other places, but I did mine under Linux, which most people aren't using. So this opens up in WordPad, or I've, I've associated any files with WordPad, uh, which possibly could cause other problems. However, so just skimming through the any file, there's the name up the top that appears on the uh, on your screen on your on the jumper. Mixer mode, all fairly ordinary. Fixed ID, and for most models this doesn't mean anything. But of course for the bugs it's critical. And that's the field that we now can auto-insert with the latest version that does a lookup as part of the code. Um, the only other things to show are the channels. Um, Arial on, I've reversed it. You can see reverse equals 1. If it's normal there's just no entry there. I mean, this these things you, you need to edit through um, yeah through an editor. Um, no, you don't. <laughs> these things you can that you need to do through the editor. The fix ID you can't edit through on the screen because it doesn't allow you to edit more than about six characters. So that you definitely need used to have to edit, but now of course you can just have it automatically put in by the uh, the latest protocol. These things down here, you can all you can always um, edit directly on the jumper. Um, and there's other people who point out, make darn sure you back up your entire models directory before you do anything. So the first one is the aerial on, where I've reversed it. Trial and error, I found I need to do that. Um, channel two, which is the elevators. On mine, that seems to be okay. So there's no no reverse type option. So that's normal. Channel 3 is the throttle, again that's perfectly normal. And channel 4 um, is the rudder. And on mine it's okay. I've just got that as, um, yeah, and I've got all these as simple. I've got them running up to 100%. That's the way I like them. Now, the, the things here, this is looking at switches. So I use channel 5, looking at this thing, looking across at my jumper. Uh, putting the jumper in the way of the camera for a moment, if I can. Yeah, so on the jumper, I'm using that first switch here to arm and disarm. Sorry about that blurry mess, but um, so channel 5 is switch D. Now a lot of other people, I'm left handed, that's probably why I do it, other people use the switches on the other side. I'm using switch D, other people tend to use switch A and C on the other side of the jumper. Depends on your handedness. So channel 5 is going to be the arming switch. So what I've got is um, D0, which is the top position of that switch, is set to minus 100, which kind of means off. Um, and switch D1, channel 5, yes, yeah, one I've got set to 100, and then D2, which is the other side at minus 100. So what that means, I've got a th I've set a three position switch, so if it's in the center position, the motors are armed. If it's on either side, uh, D0, or D2, it's off, it's minus 100. So that, that's all that's involved there. Um, there are plenty of videos around that'll show you a bit more about that, but I thought I'd, I'd just show it while I've got this up. And channel 6 is kind of trivial, it just turns the LEDs off and on, and I've got it set up the same way. If I have the center position on the next switch on the left, which is B, um, B1 is armed, B0 and B2 are off. So I thought while I, was, while I had this up, I'll just show you those few things in the any files that you need to get familiar with. But the good thing is you can edit all of that pretty much straight through the jumper. But it's nice to know what they mean and what it looks like. Okay. So as I say goodbye to Windows again, where it can once again, this machine was gathering dust since about 2009, and what with Open Sprinkler and with the um, the quadcopter business, it suddenly uh, found a new life. 
So that's nice to recycle.